Hi, Tony, Steve Vondra, and we're back. In this episode, we are talking about copyright 1202 claims. So without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. Okay, so I'm working hard here on a Saturday, but I wanted to bring you this information. This is a new case called Stevens versus CoreLogic. This came down recently in the Ninth Circuit. That's going to cover California, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, Utah, Montana, those kinds of things. Um, but we're going to, talking about, you know, if you're a photographer and you create a photo and you put it online somewhere and somebody strips off what we call the CMI, the copyright management information, and it looks like they're trying to steal your photo or whatnot, is there an infringement claim under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act? That's the DMCA. So we're going to talk a little bit about this in this video. So let's, let's head here. So now I've got a picture over here. Let me get my... Uh, yardstick here. So I've got a picture here of a photographer and this case had to do with a photographer Stevens who his job and his company was affordable aerial photos and what they did is they create photos, aerials, real estate shots, you know things that brokers can use to help their listings, to help people find, to find customers for their listings. So they would basically take the photos but they would license them to the broker, not own, now, they wouldn't sell it to them. They would license the photos, meaning that the photographer still retained the copyrights and the ownership and all the bundle of rights that come with the copyright. So they would license them to the real estate company. The real estate company, the broker, or the salesperson would upload them into the MLS. That's multiple listing service. When you have a real estate deal, you're going to put your photos into this MLS system, one or more. And CoreLogic was the owner of the MLS system, okay? And that's basically where brokers can come in and find out what's for sale and meet with their clients and say, I found some great new listings to look at. Um, but that's what this case is about. Whoops. <laughs> Give me a second here. So we're dealing with 17 USC, that's United States Code 1202. This is the section at issue. Now, what was happening was CoreLogic, when they were taking these photos, they were turning them into thumbnails or squeezing them down inside. And what was happening is some of this CMI, and we're going to talk about this stuff below here, the CMI, the copyright management information, was being uh, squeezed out. Okay, And so the photographers didn't like this. They said, what's going on? You guys are stripping out our copyright management information, our CMI. You're removing it. You're altering it. That's against the law. We want damages. And so that's what this case was about. Um, it came from uh, the Southern District Courts where the courts found a motion for summary judgment in favor of CoreLogic. And that was upheld on appeal in this case with the, with the Ninth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. So I'm going to sit over here for a second, and we're going to take a look at this CMI. Now, this case talked about, and we're going to get to um, 1202, but 1202 basically says that you can't, that it is, that, let me, I'll just read it here to you um, from my sheet. Section 1202 provides no person shall, without the authority of the copyright owner, intentionally remove or alter any copyright management information, knowing or having reasonable grounds to know that it will induce, enable, facilitate, or conceal infringement of any copyright, okay? So it's intentional knowing having reasonable grounds to know that it will induce, enable, facilitate, or conceal infringement of copyright. So that's what the law prohibits. That's kind of what was happening here, is that this information, and I have three different categories of information, um, and when you take these photos, in here we have section 17 USC 1202 information. The photo can contain the author, that would be deemed CMI, the copyright owner, if it's a different owner, the title of the photo could be taken, and the terms and conditions for the use. That's the different type of copyright management information you may be dealing with, CMI. But this case also talked about EXIF, which is Exchangeable Image File Format. And what that is, that's information on your camera. When you're using your camera, some cameras will actually just 
put out this kind of information or you have settings that will allow you to put out this kind of information. The EIX in this case could have concerned, and I'm not saying in this case, but these are the types of things you may find with EIX, EXIF, when the photo was taken and where, the shutter speed, the model and serial number of the camera, the aperture settings, the light sensitivity, and focal length of the lens. So you have a lot of different things under the EIX, EIX, <laughs> EIXF category. And what they were saying here is that in transforming this into thumbnail photos, you know what a thumbnail photo is, that this information was getting squeezed out, so they weren't happy with that. And then you also have IPTC metadata, and that stands for some uh, international uh, convention of some sort, but IPTC metadata, and that can include the title of the image, keywords, caption and a description, and again, copyright restriction. So this is all the different types of CMI that you might have, copyright management information. And so if somebody is intentionally um, eliminating this information or removing it, altering it so that they can infringe a copyright or induce it, as I just read, then you can have a violation of the DMCA and that carries damages and attorney fees and other things. So this was what's at issue. Now, this case really stands for the proposition that it has to be intentional, that it has to be an intentional infringement. And in this case, the court said that the photographers did not, could not, and did not make the allegations that this was intentional, that it was knowing that they were trying to do this to promote or conceal an infringement. It just wasn't there. What they said is this was software and you know they had tried to, CoreLogic had tried to fix it, but it was just kind of doing this. So they weren't really trying to infringe the software. And the court basically said you have to make uh, I'll just read it here. In short, to satisfy the knowledge requirement, a plaintiff bringing a section 1202B1 claim must offer more than a mere assertion that when CMI metadata is removed, copyright infringement plaintiffs lose an important method of identifying a photo as infringing. So it has to be something more than, hey, I lost my information that could lead to an infringement. The court said, no, there has to be something certain. You have to allege, for example, a pattern of conduct or a modus operandi. To, so there has to be some allegation that there's some sort of knowledge, mental state requirement, some sort of scienter that they were trying to do this by stripping some of the CMI away. So that's really a, a quick look at what the DMCA 12012 claim looks like. If you're facing issues with, the, with a 1202 claim, you can find out more information at our website, dmcacouncil.com. And again, this is Attorney Steve. I hope you like this video. And if you do, feel free to subscribe to our channel or punch that like button. That always helps us out. But other than that, we hope you appreciate this. Have a great weekend. We got to get running. We'll see you again on Monday. Take care.